Jack here, JBF Music and Guitar Lessons, back with some more signature guitar lick goodness for you, from Iron Maiden's Dave Murray. <laughs> Just before we get into it, the tabs are up on my patreon.com forward slash JBF music if you want them. If you enjoy this kind of content I'm putting out in general, please do let me know with a like and a comment. Both really do help out the channel as well as the visibility of this specific video. And if you haven't already, feel free to give subscribe a click to do the enable all notifications thing to let that most notorious of algorithms know that you'd like to see more of this content. Alright, alright, so three licks and ascending difficulty, but I mean, it's the legend that is Dave Murray here. His unique, smooth, bluesy influence style isn't exactly easy stuff. And I mean, we're standing on the shoulders of giants here. Guys like Dave really pioneered the sort of hard rock or metal playing. If you want more Murray licks or content based on a more specific area of his playing, pop it in the comments, but let's just crack into it, eh? real blues infused lick from Rathchild, not far off something Jimi Hendrix might have played, and this one is all about vibe and subtle phrasing. Here we're bending by a tone, releasing that bend and then bending again with vibrato. For some tips on keeping that sound in control, check out the little eye up there. We've got a final bend, return to pitch, and I think this is a pull off here. You might want to strike the note on that 12th fret there, up to yourself, either way sounds good. Then we're onto the 12th fret on the G string, adding some nice controlled vibrato. You want to rake into the next note, so kind of go through the, the G, maybe the D string as well while you hit the B. And you want to bend this by three semitones, so your target pitch is there. You want to dip it just a tiny bit, maybe a semitone at most. Then bend it back to pitch, that tone and a half, and release. If you release it all the way, you can hear it just doesn't sound like the real thing. Dave just drops it a little bit before bending it back up to pitch. After we've released it, we've got this hammer from the 12th to the 14th. And you want to play this a little bit staccato. And that means to cut off this note's duration. So rather than playing it like... If you can get a little bit... Slow that down. So there you can hear it kind of muted to the 14th fret instead of going... Read this. On this 12th fret, you want to hit this with a bit more force. You want to accent it, add the vibrato, and we wrap it up on the D's 14th fret, sliding down and out of the lick. With this little bit here, this you maybe want to play about with the timing, playing it behind the beat a tiny bit as well. It's it's difficult to explain this stuff if you listen to the way I did it with the backing track where you can really hear the timing. And also Dave's original, you can get the nuance and the phrasing. That this, The real difference is the subtlety in these timings, like pushing the beat or holding it back. That's what makes it sound cool. That's what makes it really pop. In terms of the theory, we are all in E minor here in the pentatonic, a staple of Dave's playing. For more on his other tricks, check out that How to Play Like Dave Murray tutorial with the eye up there. We've got the flat 7th here being bent up to the root for these three bends. Returning to the pitch of the flat 7th, pulling off to the 5th, and then the flat 3rd. We're bending the root all the way up to the flat 3rd, and again. Then to finish up we've got flat 3rd, 4th, flat 3rd, root.
right, this one is from a live solo, but you hear this type of lick and pattern all over his playing. One of the main tricks here is to do a mini sweep across the G and the B strings, so down and down. I'm using downward pick slanting, holding the pick like this. For a quick one on one on that, check out the video with a little eye up there. But also look out for patterns here. So after this initial one, if it in the 12th fret, hitting it again, and hammer on and pull off. We've got this pattern three times. So again, I'm hitting the 14th fret with a down, 12th with a down, hammer on, pull off. And that gives me time to get back over the string to hit the 14th fret on the G with another down. After those three ones, so this, two, three, we've got a really similar pattern. We're starting on the 14th fret, then going straight to the 13th on the B, pull off, hammer on, pull off. Another variation here, we're just going up the scale really, you've got the 14th fret, down to the 12th again, and hammer on, pull off, back to this 14th fret, and again I'm just playing this with a down, this little 13 to 12, again this little sweep trick we're doing. And things change a little bit here. Another variation where we just go up the scale. Again I'm doing a down, down, and hammer, hammer. As a side note, I've gone into way more detail on this type of legato and how to improvise with it in that Dave Murray legato quick tricks video up there. But after this we descend the scale, so after we've hit this note, we're just going to pull off. And actually, if you split this lick into these two parts, you've essentially got two things that Dave does a lot. So pretty much two tricks in one here. And as an additional bonus trick of sorts, Dave will often mix these ideas together on the fly. So try chopping and changing stuff to suit yourself. But anyway, we've got that mini sweep again, as I said, on the G string. We're going to pull off from the 13th to the 12th. Back to this G string. Pull off. Slide down. Hammer. Then you want to hit the string again. Pull off onto the D string and this rhythm took me a while to get but if you think of the phrases as indicated by the overlay there it should make it a little bit more intuitive. We've got this 14th fret by itself, 12th fret which we're hammering on to the 14th, pull off, slide down, hammer on, pull off. You then want to hit this 10th fret again, hammer on, pull off, slide down, hammer on, pull off. Leaning into a more exotic metal sound here using the B for G in scale. So while it is in E minor, this lick will sound best over a B5 power chord or a B minor chord. We're using the root, the flat second, and the seventh for the most part here, so all that, all that kind of stuff. We venture up to this flat third. And then we just kind of come down the scale, whereas he's sort of doing mini trills to create more of a melodic contour, but in essence we're going from this note all the way down to this one here. So going from the flat third to the root, but an octave lower. And what I mean by the mini trills is we're kind of going down the scale, and then from here on you're doing the kind of hammer on pull off thing. So he's just kind of going up to one note and then back down to the other, just to make it a bit more interesting. Rather than just going down the scale in a stepwise motion. Dave's created a much more melodically interesting or varied line to listen to.
final flourish from Afraid to Shoot Strangers, just to touch on another flavour of Dave's playing. As you'd expect, we got plenty of trills, legato, and probably some mini sweeping as well, just like the last lick. Obviously, if you prefer alternate picking it, just do that. With this kind of stuff, the path of least resistance is probably the best one. So we slide into this ninth fret. It doesn't really matter where from, it's just a kind of grace slide, so you don't really uh, come from any set note, you're just going into it. We have this little thing here from the 7 to the 8, a little trill, hammer on, pull off. Then we have a 9th to 12th fret slide, so make sure not to rush this, you do want to hear both notes. So while we just slide into this one, rather than being, you want it to be, so the difference between, and, okay. And what we're doing here is moving this trill idea up three semitones. Again, look out for patterns and variations. For a much more detailed breakdown of his favourite legato licks and picking patterns, there's a much more comprehensive video tutorial with the eye up there. So doing this one two times. Then a longer trill. So we're hitting this note, but then going hammer, pull off, hammer, pull off. We then have one more of the regular chunks. Next we go down the scale. So hitting the 12th fret, a pull off, and then a slide. Back up to our beloved pattern one more time. Then a quick slide to the 14th fret. So unlike the 9th to the 12th fret slide that we did, this is much more like the first one, where you just want to slide into the note. So after we've done this, you don't want to hear the 12th fret for the same duration, you just want to slide straight into the 14th fret. Okay, we're then going up the scale using hammers. This little trill on the E string. Back down to the B. Going up the scale again, some legato on the E string. Now the song reduces tempo here, so what we do is we slow down with it. We're hitting that 15th fret, sliding up to the 17th. 15 on the E. Up a tone to the 17th on the E. Hit it one more time. A slow bend up to pitch and bring in some nice controlled vibrato. Okay, so we've got some really cool out notes here. This is the sound of Dave's I've always liked, but I've never bothered to fully break down until now. We're in E minor here. The notes of the first bar here actually occur over an A5 to B. But they go by so quickly, I reckon it's safe enough just to think of this as being over E minor. So we've got the root, the second, and the flat third. Back to the second. And we slide from the root up to the flat third. Using the fourth and the flat fifth the blues note from the next bar. So while this flat third gives us some tonal stability, the flat fifth really adds that tension and edge. For me, this solo really nails the theme of this song, that sort of chaos that I can only imagine of being faced with the reality of having to shoot someone in a war zone. It, this part in particular feels like a million thoughts just rushing through your mind in an already frantic environment. But <laughs> you can tell when a guitarist is listening to way too much Steve Vai, can't you? Sorry. <laughs> Back on track. And we've got that classic Murray idea of a simple pattern but then adding in spontaneous variations to keep it sounding fresh. So while we're just going between this flat third, the fourth and the flat fifth and adding in the variations it sounds much more interesting and engaging. A really cool line going down here to take advantage of some modal interchange. We're playing the flat third, the flat second, and then the root. So a brief flirtation with Phrygian. I suspect Dave's hand just did this move out of intuition and comfort. It certainly feels more natural to me to play this than use the F sharp. The F sharp being from the E natural minor. So if we're playing it in key, it would be that. But this flat second, Although it's just a tiny note in there, it really makes all the difference to me, just adding in bits of extra flavour and edge. We then go back to this initial pattern one more time. Then ascend the scale using the 4th, 5th, flat 6th, flat 7th. It's a little trill from the root in the flat 9th. Or flat 2nd if you want to think about that way, so just more Phrygian flavours there. And adding just enough of an outside to keep this like spicy without going overboard. We're back to the flat 7th. And up with the root, flat second, flat third. We've got flat seven slide to the root. And here, just as a kind of technical note, the easiest way I find to play is just to hammer on with these fingers and then get my second finger ready for the slide. And this is where we're going from that flat seven to the root. Then you're fairly easy here. You can use your first finger for this note here, which is, of course, the flat third. We then play the fourth, 
bending this up a tone to the fifth where you can add in the vibrato. If you'd like some more detailed tips on creating your own Dave Murray style licks, check out that tutorial. This has been Signature Guitar Licks, that's the playlist there. But yeah, hit subscribe to keep up to date with the channel, leave me a comment, check out the tab on my Patreon, and enable all notifications by ringing that little bell on the side if you feel so inclined. Cheers, guys.